One of the things you hear flat earthers say the most is to use common sense. Apparently, if we do, then it becomes evident that the Earth is not a spinning globe. But what happens if we play the flurfs at their own game? Actually use common sense to show that the Earth can't be flat. Well, what happens is we end up with five points that flat earthers have no choice but to accept. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, on with today's video then, which as I said in the intro, we'll be using common sense today. You don't need a telescope, you don't need equations, you don't even need NASA. All you need is this and the ability to string two observations together. Today, we're going to prove that the Earth can't be flat using only common sense, not science. No maths, no satellites, just basic logic. And yes, if this video upsets any flat earthers, then they would have realised that we've used their greatest weapon against them. Here we go. Number one, you can't see Spain from New York, which is weird if the earth is flat. Let's say you're in New York, beautiful skyline, overpriced coffee, and you decide to look east all the way across the Atlantic. If the earth were flat, what's stopping you from seeing Portugal or Spain, or at least the faint glimmer of the lights in Lisbon on a clear night. Now flat earthers love to say you can't see things like that because of the atmosphere. Okay sure, but here's the thing, on a clear day you can see the moon at 384,000 kilometres away. Through all of that same atmosphere. So if we can see that, why can't we see land that's only a few thousand kilometres away? Let's test that common sense a bit. Why can't I see distant objects across a vast ocean? A because the earth curves, or B, because of a secret light bending fog that always appears exactly when needed and only blocks things horizontally. If you pick B, then you aren't really using your common sense, are you? Just think about it. It's common sense, it really is. Okay, number two then is that time zones prove we're on a rotating sphere. This is one I really love, time zones. We all live by them and some of us hate them. And flat earthers have absolutely no clue how they work. If the earth were flat, what would time even mean? In the common flat earth theory, the sun is usually this light bulb doing lazy loops around the north pole above the disk. According to this model, we should be able to always see a bit of this sun. At the very least, the sky should glow at that distance. And yet, when the sun sets in your part of the world, in the middle of the night, it gets pitch black. Not dim or dusky, pitch black. It's just gone. And that's not how a spotlight behaves. That's how the sun behaves when you rotate away from it. So unless you think we're living under some kind of stealth bulb that knows when to turn off and on for specific countries, then we're on a globe. Just think about it, guys. It's common sense really, isn't it? Let's move on to number three then, which is flight paths only make sense on a globe. Picture this, a flight from Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia. On a globe, the route goes across the South Pacific in a clean arc. On a flat earth map though, the same two cities are miles apart and the route looks like it should take you halfway across the world. Now. Here is where common sense walks in. That flight in the real world takes about 13 hours direct. No mysterious 30 hour reroutes through Kazakhstan or anything. There's no teleportation involved. It matches what we'd expect from a curved planet. The shortest distance on a globe is an arc, not a line, usually in the form of a great circle. If the flat earth were real, these flights would need to cruise over the US just to get between two points that on a globe are almost neighbours. And what's the flat earth explanation for this? Well, they're all lying, aren't they? The pilots, all the airlines, all the GPS satellites, all the airports. Every aviation authority on earth is lying, apparently. Listen, I'll trust Ryanair to maybe lose my luggage. I do not trust them to maintain a decades long international conspiracy. And emergency landings also follow the globe. Look up any in-flight emergencies that have diverted. They always land at the nearest airport on the globe. Not the AE map, not the Mercator projection map, 
but the globe. Common sense, really. Okay, right, let's move on to point number four then, which is the stars change depending on where you are. Let's talk about the sky then, the night sky. If you travel south, say from London to Cape Town, then all of a sudden, all the stars that you're used to change to something completely different. You can't see Polaris anymore. And instead, you can see the Southern Cross. Now, as you travel, the stars will start to rotate around a different point. In the north, they circle the North Celestial Pole, which Polaris is very close to. In the south, they circle the South Celestial Pole. And this is something the Flat Earthers can never explain. The dome model can't account for it. Why would stars change position entirely just because you moved south? It's not like you're walking into a new cinema or something and seeing a different ceiling. But on a globe, it's simple. You're on a curved surface. As you move, your angle to space shifts. That's why you see new constellations and lose old ones. The Flat Earthers claim that all the stars and the planets are fixed to the firmament. That's a cool story and everything, but you need to explain why some stars never rise at all unless you're in certain hemispheres. What kind of dome works like that? I'll tell you what, a really badly designed one. You just need to think about it and have a bit more common sense. Right then, our final point then, that proves that the Earth is not flat using common sense only, is the way that the ships disappear over the horizon proves curvature. I know you're gonna love this one, Flurfers. This one has been known since ancient Greek times. You watch a ship sail off into the distance, first the hull vanishes, then the mast, then the sails, then the whole thing is gone. Now, flat earthers will often say, use a zoom lens, get your Nikon P900 out. Okay, brilliant, zoom in on one then. You'll find that you might bring back the top of the ship, but the bottom is still gone because it's below the curve. As you can see with examples here, and here, and here. All of these photos, they've zoomed in on the ship, but it doesn't matter how much zooming you do, if a boat is behind the curve, it's behind the curve. You can't bring it back. If you're standing on a hill, for example, and someone walks away from you, first, you'll lose their feet, then their legs, then their body, then their head. You don't say that's an optical illusion, you say they went over the hill. It's the same with Earth, except that hill never stops. The lookouts in ships' masks can see further than people on deck. The higher the altitude, the further your horizon. Mountains rise from the sea as you approach them, from the top first. All of this is expected on a globe. None of it makes sense on a flat Earth. The sea isn't eating ships. The air isn't pixelating buildings. It is just Earth curving. It's been doing that for billions of years without your permission. I'm afraid it's all just common sense. So there we go, five arguments, zero science degrees required. And yet despite all this, people still insist it's flat. Despite championing common sense, they still won't accept these points. They'll say, do your own research. Fine, I will. You can too. Go outside, watch a sunset, book a flight, Stand on a beach, look up at the stars. All of this can be done. You don't need any science education, just your brain and some common sense. The earth is a globe. It's been a globe since before you were born and it will stay a globe long after your angry Facebook post. Well, there we go, everyone. What did we all think of that one? I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, then please let me know in the comments below, as well as any other common sense arguments you can think of as well, and maybe we'll do a part two. So that just leaves me to say we're all done and dusted for another one then. Thanks so much for watching. It's very much appreciated. If you enjoyed this episode, please do consider subscribing to the channel, uh, as well as hitting the thumbs up button too if you really enjoyed this one, or share it as well if you know any flurfers that always say, use your common sense. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the return of CC. Chris from Westchester, County New York. See you then. <laughs>